Blessed be the God of our salvation, who bears our burdens and forgives our sins. Welcome to Midday Prayer. I'm Sue, I'm a member of St John's Congregation in Princess Street in Edinburgh. During this Lenten journey, we commence our midday prayers by praying with words from Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, after thy great goodness. According to the multitude of thy mercies, do away mine offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified in thy saying, and clear when thou art charged, Behold, I was shapen in wickedness, and in sin hath my mother conceived me. But, lo, thou requirest truth in the inward parts, and shalt make me to understand wisdom secretly. Thou shalt purge me with his hope, and I shall be clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Thou shalt make me hear of joy and gladness, that the bonds which thou hast broken may rejoice. Turn thy face from my sins, and put out all my misdeeds. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. O oh, give me the comfort of thy help again, and establish me with thy free spirit. Then shall I teach thy ways unto the wicked, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou that art the God of my health. And my tongue shall sing of thy righteousness. Thou shalt open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall show thy praise. For thou desirest no sacrifice, else would I give it thee. But thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O oh God, shalt thou not despise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, what without end. Amen. A reading from Hebrews. But recall those earlier days when, after you had been enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with sufferings, sometimes being publicly exposed to abuse and persecution, and sometimes being partners with those so treated. For you had compassion for those who were in prison, and you cheerfully accepted the plundering of your possessions, knowing that you yourselves possessed something better and more lasting. Do not, therefore, abandon that confidence of yours. It brings a great reward, for you need endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. For yet, in a very little while, the one who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith. My soul takes no pleasure in anyone who shrinks back. But we are not among those who shrink back, 
and so are lost. But among those who have faith, and so are saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray with words from Psalm 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when our enemies attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said, Then they will hand you over to be tortured, and will put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away, and they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But anyone who endures to the end will be saved. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end will come. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Canticle, A Song of Christ's Goodness by Anselm of Canterbury Jesus, as a mother you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. Often you weep over our sins and our pride. Tenderly you draw us from hatred and judgment. You comfort us in sorrow and bind up our wounds. In sickness you nurse us and with pure milk you feed us. Jesus, by your dying, we are born to new life. By your anguish and labour, we come forth in joy. Despair turns to hope through your sweet goodness. Through your gentleness, we find comfort in fear. Your warmth gives life to the dead. Your touch makes sinners righteous. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, heal us. In your love and tenderness, remake us. In your compassion, bring grace and forgiveness. For the beauty of heaven, may your love pre prepare us. On the 7th of March every year, the Church remembers Perpetua, Felicity and their companions. Vivia Perpetua, born in 181, was a young widow, mother of an infant and owner of several slaves, including Felicity and Revocatus, with two other young Carthaginians, Secundulus and Saturninus, they were all catechumens preparing together for baptism. Early in the 3rd century, Emperor Septimius Severus decreed that all persons should sacrifice to the emperor. Many Christians, confessing faith in the one Lord Jesus Christ, believed that they could not do this. Perpetua, Felicity and the other catechumens were arrested and held in prison under miserable conditions. At the public hearing before the proconsul, Perpetua refused even the entreaties of her aged father. Pointing to a water pot, she asked him, See that pot lying there? Can you call it by any other name than what it is? Her father answered, Of course not. Perpetua responded, Neither can I call myself by any other name other than what I am. A Christian. Felicity was eight months pregnant at the time they were arrested. Because pregnant women could not be executed, she was anxious, lest the others be executed apart from her, while she would be condemned to die at some other time alone. Two days before the scheduled execution, however, she gave birth to a baby girl who was adopted and raised by an anonymous Christian woman in Carthage. A document that is attributed to Perpetua recounts the visit, visions that she had while in prison. One was of a ladder to heaven, which she climbed to reach a large garden. Another was of her brother, who had died when young of a dreadful disease, but was now well and drinking the water of life. The last was of herself, as a, bat as a warrior battling the devil and defeating him to an entrance to the gate of life. And I awoke, understanding that I should fight, 
not with beasts, but with the devil. On March the 7th, 203, Perpetua and Felicity, encouraging one another to bear bravely whatever pain they might suffer, were sent to the arena to be mangled by a leopard, a boar, a bear, and a savage cow. Perpetua and Felicity, tossed by the cow, were bruised and dishevelled, but Perpetua, lost in spirit and ecstasy, hardly knew that anything had happened. To her companion she cried, Stand fast in the faith and love one another, and do not let what we suffer be a stumbling block to you. Eventually both Perpetua and Felicity were put to death by a stroke of a sword through the throat. The soldier who struck Perpetua was inept. His first blow merely pierced her throat between the bones. She shrieked with pain, then aided the man to guide the sword properly. The report of her death concludes, Perhaps so great a woman, feared by the unclean spirit, could not have been killed unless she so willed it. Let us pray. O oh God, the King of Saints, who strengthened your servants Perpetua, Felicity and their companions to make a good confession and to encourage one another in the time of trial, grant that we who cherish their blessed memory may share their pure and steadfast faith and win with them the palm of victory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Strengthen us, O Lord, by your grace, that in your might we may overcome all spiritual enemies, and with pure hearts serve you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and for ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that we never have to face anything alone or in our own power. You comfort us and give us strength to deal with whatever is before us. We thank you for the promise of spring, the sunlight hours that grow longer day by day, the buds on the trees, snowdrops, crocuses, and very early daffodils. We thank you for the unexpected privileges of the lockdown, a chance to see things differently, to show care, to see how much care is being shown by people we may not have taken time to appreciate before. Lord, we pray that we may learn to see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Uniting our voices into one, we pray in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>